it's time to activate into conspiracy mode as we look into the X-Files, insanely popular TV series that was a staple of 1990s television, where it featured FBI agents Fox Mulder and Dana Scully, played by David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson where they would investigate strange cases, of which have unexplained or paranormal twists, where they would often explore the mythology and possibility of aliens and UFOs, as well as government cover-ups and conspiracies. And the show would even often go into the horror genre, with its frequent Monster of the Week stories, of which are bound to twist your mind and leave you questioning everything. I can remember watching The X-Files when I was a youngster and it just blew my mind. I would just be sitting there watching it and processing it all and being like, what the actual? And I loved it. So with that, 10 things that you didn't know about The X-Files. And remember, trust no one. Number 10, The X-Files was created to escape comedy. The X-Files was the creation of American writer, producer, and director Chris Carter. It was in the early 90s when Carter was offered a job to develop TV shows for the Fox network, and Carter jumped at the possibility, for if anything, because at that time he was working for Disney, where he mainly worked on made-for-TV comedy movies, and, well, he was just tired of writing comedies for Disney. So he packed up his bags and said goodbye to the House of Mouse, and it was over to Fox, where he would now make some freaky-deaky television history. Number 9. Inspiration for the X-Files What primarily inspired Carter to create the X-Files was a report he read in which it claimed that 3.7 million Americans believed that they had been abducted by aliens. The idea of Mulder and Scully literally just popped into his head, as they represented a contrast of interest. There was Mulder who represented the part of Carter who wanted to believe in strange and paranormal occurrences, but then you had Scully who was the voice of reason, and the part of Chris's mind that actually didn't want to accept that there are strange, impossible phenomena. When it came to the FBI aspect of the show, Carter drew inspiration from Silence of the Lambs, particularly how it revolves around the Clarice character who is a young FBI agent. The government conspiracy side of the show grew from Carter's fascination with the Watergate scandal. Carter also took inspiration from the Twilight Zone TV series, which like the X-Files had monster slash phenomenon of the week episodes, and the British crime drama Prime Suspect, which would often show the grisly side of law enforcement and crime solving, was also a leading influence for the X-Files, as well as Twin Peaks being the inspiration for the show's twisted and surreal atmosphere. And of course, something else that was a huge influence was a 1970s horror series called Kolchak the Night Stalker, which, like the X-Files, mixes crime drama with the supernatural. So with this new idea of a TV show being created, it was now time for wanting to believe. Except for one problem. Number 8. Fox turned down the X-Files. So, yeah, Chris Carter presented his X-Files concept to executives at Fox, and they rejected it. They had no interest in making a scary TV show, so Carter went back to the drawing board to flesh out the characters some more, when finally Fox greenlit a pilot. So as with all other pilots, the X-Files pilot was to test to see if the X-Files could be successful where in the pilot we would see Scully meet Mulder, where the two newly partnered FBI agents would travel to a small town to investigate strange deaths, which may be the result of alien experiments. The pilot was aired on September the 10th, 1993, and it was very successful and praised and was seen as being like Silence of the Lambs mixed with Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And so due to the pilot's popular reception, season one was greenlit, and suddenly the world had fallen in love with the strange and often terrifying exploits of Mulder and Scully. 
Number seven, casting. The characters of Mulder and Scully were meant to go against conventional stereotypes in that it was the male character who was more spiritual and a believer, and the female character who was the skeptic, whereas back then, it used to be the other way around. When it came to casting Mulder, Last Starfighter and Jaws the Revenge actor Lance Guess auditioned to play the part. However, David Duchovny was given a script by his agent, and although he wanted a career in movies, he auditioned and blew everyone away and was cast. Although Chris Carter at first wasn't entirely convinced, however, he then very quickly came around to the idea. As for Scully, well, interestingly enough, the producers really wanted Pamela Anderson to play the part. According to the New Zealand Herald, Duchovny himself wanted Flashdance actress Jennifer Bills to play Scully, as the two had previously worked together before. However, Gillian Anderson read the part, and she was cast as Carter really liked her stern, no-nonsense demeanor. Duchovny and Anderson have amazing chemistry together, and you like and care about their characters, as they are very likeable and relatable, and I think it's this casting that helped with the show's longevity. Now, there's stories out there that Duchovny and Anderson really didn't like each other while making the show, I don't know if that's true or not, but if that is the case, then that's even more of a credit to their acting. It was also important to Carter that Mulder and Scully strictly had a plutonic relationship, as opposed to the usual Hollywood trope of romance and love affairs. And he based their plutonic relationship on John Steed and Emma Pill from the 1960s British spy TV show, The Avengers. Number six, filming locations. When it came to preparing the show, the original intention of the show's creator, Chris Carter, was to film X-Files in and around Los Angeles. However, he couldn't find adequate places to film in, and so it was decided to head up to the Great North itself, where the X-Files series would be filmed in Canada, particularly in and around Vancouver, for if anything, because Vancouver had good rainforests. And so the first five seasons of the X-Files were filmed in Vancouver. And I think the location just gave X-Files a certain look and identity. However, there were some people who were getting tired of the Canadian shoots, particularly Gillian Anderson and David Duchovny, who didn't like the weather and being so far away from his wife. So from season 6 to season 9, X-Files was filmed in Los Angeles. But it's said that the move drastically changed the show, as many of the original crew no longer worked on the show when it shifted to LA. And it no longer had that cold, foggy forest look. But now, thanks to the warmer Californian climate, it had a hotter, drier look. Number five, the creation of the theme was something of an accident. We all know the X-Files theme as soon as we hear the creepy whistling, which lets us know straight away that we're about to embark on some pretty intense conspiracies and other strange phenomena. Without a doubt, the X-Files theme has become iconic. The score was put together by composer Mark Snow, who previously scored other shows such as Startsky and Hutch, The Love Boat, and Pee-wee's Playhouse. He wanted the theme to feature the creepy whistle, which is known as Whistling Joe. Snow was inspired by the song How Soon Is Now by The Smiths, which also featured a whistling segment. As for the theme's echo effect, which just adds that creepy factor, well, this was an accident. You see, Snow was trying to perfect the song and working on sound effects, where in frustration, he pressed his hands and forearms on his keyboard. And just like that, he accidentally activated the echo sound effect. And voila, an iconic science fiction score was created. As for the show's title sequence, Carter just wanted to show some supernatural images, but for it to also be impactful, where the X-Files intro alone would win an Emmy Award, and was considered as being innovative for its time, as it was felt that it was really unique, and that nothing like this had ever been seen on TV before. I can vividly remember watching the X-Files intro when I was a kid, and with its strange visuals and whistle music, I honestly thought that this was the strangest thing I had ever seen. Like, I really found it really bizarre. Like, what is with this whistling? Why is that guy's face going bleh? But, you know, it then grew on me, and then it totally all made sense. Number four, 
one episode was considered so effed up it was temporarily banned. So if it's aliens and UFOs you want, then X-Files had that in spades, along with some sneaky and corrupt government agents, like the famed cigarette smoking man played by William B. Davis, but there was also the good guys too, like FBI assistant director Walter Skinner, played by Mitch Pileggi. However, the episodes that I loved the most were the Monster of the Week ones, where we would step away from aliens and conspiracy theories and explore other supernatural phenomena, where over the show's 11 seasons, Mulder and Scully would go up against ghosts, demonic possession, spontaneous combustion, vampires, time-traveling murderers, shapeshifters, a hungry alligator, an evil puppet, genetic mutants, a lizard man, a genie, a deadly video game, dangerous explosive zits, and of course probably the most remembered of them all, Fluke Man, a human and fluke worm hybrid that lived in the sewer. However, one episode proved to be a little bit too much, and that was an episode called Home from Season 4, which I think took inspiration from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where it focuses on a strange, murderous, mutant family. The episode was infamous for its extreme violence, gore, as well as themes of incest and infant side, and many felt that thanks to that episode, the show had just gone too far. According to listverse.com, several producers labelled the show's main staff as, quote, sick. The episode didn't feature on reruns. However, it was finally aired again in 1999, but supposedly even then cuts were made to the episode as well as a disclaimer and higher rating. I can remember watching the full uncut episode on DVD and thinking, yeah, this show is pretty messed up. And it's awesome. <laughs> Sorry, but I did. And I think it's safe to say that even now, Home is still considered the X-Files' most controversial episode. Number 3. Famous Faces so over the years, X-Files would see many famous or would-be famous faces turning up along the way. And when I say there were celebrity guests, I mean there was tons and tons. Some of these include Ryan Reynolds, Jack Black, Shia LaBeouf, Brian Cranston, Lucy Liu, Danny Trejo, Bruce Campbell, Brad Dourif, Michael Buble, Peter Boyle, Burt Reynolds, Luke Wilson, and oh my god, the list is still going. There is just so many, it just goes on and on. Yep, it seems that everyone wanted to star in The X-Files. Even Stephen King himself wrote an episode, that of course being Chinga. And Mulder and Scully themselves would even become special guest stars when they appeared in the Simpsons episode, The Springfield Files in 1997. And yes, the parts were voiced by David Duchovny and Gillian Anderson. And not only would X-Files spawn some famous faces, but also an entire movie franchise, as the first Final Destination movie was going to be an X-Files episode until it became its own thing. Number 2. Spin-Offs so there were two spin-off shows that were made in the heyday of the X-Files to further expand on the show's universe. First up there was Millennium, which ran for three seasons from 1996 to 1999 and it starred Lance Henriksen as FBI agent Frank Black, who had the power to see through the eyes of serial killers, where he joins a private investigation group called Millennium. The show had a promising start, but declining views saw its eventual cancellation. Then in 2001, there was The Lone Gunman, and it focused on Mulder's conspiracy theorist friends, aka The Lone Gunman. By the way, when I was a kid, I always thought this guy was Garth from Wayne's World. <laughs> Whereas I was aware of Millennium, I wasn't even aware of The Lone Gunman till well and truly after the fact, and it did only last just 13 episodes. In addition to that, going back to listverse.com, there were several X-Files episodes that weren't made. These include an episode that was meant to be something of a callback to Night of the Living Dead and was to be directed by George A. Romero himself, and an episode which featured the ghost of Abraham Lincoln haunting the White House, which honestly sounds like it could have been pretty awesome. Number 1. Real Life Tragedy Led to the Show's End Throughout the 90s, The X-Files was really in its heyday of popularity, which accumulated to the 1998 theatrical movie, which, by way of goats, deserves its own episode. 
However, by season eight, which came out in the year 2000, David Duchovny had decided to limit the amount of episodes that he would star in, with season eight and nine mainly seeing him as a character who shows up every now and then. One quick Google search suggests that this was because Duchovny's contract with the show had expired and he didn't really want to renew it, which is sad, but I guess at that stage, the show had been going on for nearly 10 years. I guess the guy was just tired. So his replacement, the character John Dodgett was created, who was played by Robert Patrick. And the Dodgett character was the first hint that maybe the X-Files could go on without its star characters, Mulder and Scully. Look, I love Robert Patrick. I mean, the guy was the T-1000, so he's already a sci-fi legend. But from memory, watching his episodes, I just didn't think his chemistry with Gillian Anderson was as magical and as on point as it was with Duchovny, despite Patrick giving it his all. Chris Carter envisioned that X-Files could probably go on for a further 10 years and could introduce new characters, where in Season 9, another character called Monica Reyes, played by Annabeth Gish, was brought into the show. But I think at that stage, I just kind of lost interest and wasn't really keeping up with it anymore. I think this idea of having more X-Files without Mulder and Scully was misguided, as I think Duchovny and Anderson's chemistry and how their characters played off each other was the heart of the show. And without that, the show has no heart. However, in May 2002, the 20th episode of Season 9 was aired, and it was called The Truth. And it was the second part of a two-part story, and this would be the last X-Files episode. The show simply didn't return the following year. Why? Well, simply put, because 9-11 happened, and during the broadcast of Season 9, the views had a dramatic drop. It was suggested that the drop may have been due to incoherent storylines, but the cast and crew felt that it was because of the attacks, and that people just didn't want to see a show about government conspiracies and murders. It just wasn't the right time for it. So, simply put, the show didn't return the following year. The X-Files would have two revivals, one in 2008 with the second movie, I Want to Believe, which I personally found really, really boring and a little bit pretentious. For a start, it didn't feature any aliens. Instead, we got weird brain surgeons. Okay. Yeah, look, this one just didn't do it for me. Then in 2016, the X-Files would return for a six-part season which was then followed up with another season in 2018, which consisted of 11 episodes. And thus far, this is the last that we have seen of Mulder and Scully. Will they return? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. But regardless, we'll always have that magic from the 90s, when we would see Mulder and Scully go and investigate a case where all manner of crazy supernatural chaos would ensue. Yep, each episode, we the audience, would let Mulder and Scully into our living rooms to entertain us, and open our minds, and it made growing up in that time period, that little bit more awesome. Thank you Mulder and Scully. Look, I think I've said everything that needed to be said, there's no need to keep waffling. I think being there when the show came out and witnessing the X-Files during its heyday was truly magical. And it's easy to see why the show became such a massive sensation. I mean, in the 90s, the X-Files was huge and it was everywhere. Anyway, I'm Minty. And remember, the truth is out there. See ya!